Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Force 5, which is the show where I invite a special guest on to share their five favorite Star Wars figures from any era, any scale, any line, their choice. I have no idea what they've chosen. They're going to let us know together at the same time. And for this edition, my special guest is a writer, a performer, uh, one part of the Mighty Force Center podcast network, Ken Knapsack. It's a pleasure to meet another Ken, finally. I never thought it would happen. Finally, finally. I've been seeing you on the social media ether, been seeing you in chat room, Star Wars Explained. I see you at some of their live shows, and then I know you're a pal with uh, Joseph Scribshaw. It makes it very difficult to listen to Forest Center and just hear Joseph going, Ken, and I have a reaction. <laughs> It's not uh, me. So, so I've been I've been calling you Ken Prime only because uh, this is your show. So, uh, you know, I'm the clone. You're the Ken. We'll trade off. Well, there we'll both go. we'll both get to be. Uh, but but thank you for doing this. Thank yeah, you for coming on. So let's talk a little bit about your Star Wars collecting history, because mm. I think your story is a little similar to mine in how the action figure collection <laughs> is in some ways. Ooh, interesting. So, so let's go back. You're we're 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 same vintage era. Yeah, yeah. So, what is your relationship to action figure collecting? Uh, this is uh, there's, there's like a gathering storm cloud of tragedy in our stories. If yours is <laughs> any uh, similarity to mine, yeah, uh, 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 a child of uh, you know, born in '76, uh, raised in the '80s, so definitely uh, we're in that toy, uh, the glory days of toys, right? GI Joe, Transformers, all that stuff, and really fell in love with Star Wars early, but loved the other things too. So I started to naturally get the figures. I have some early memories. A family friend, I was the quiet little kid at a party, and he he sat down with me. And my dad and was like, oh. You, your, your, your kid's quiet and shy. I know it will fix them. Star Wars. And, and brought down all the classic figures in those C, uh, the C-3PO and Darth Vader case. Uh, and I just remember being like, what is this? And didn't really, I thought it was Buck Rogers and Battlestar Galactic all rolled into one. Um, so from there about Return of the Jedi era is uh, when I really started to, you know, crave the plastic. Uh, tell my parents. <laughs> when you were old thing. enough to be actively involved in, no, yes. I want this. This is the thing that's important to me. Yeah, so I was a big classic G.I. Joe, or, or classic for that era. Of course, G.I. Joe before that era as well. Uh, but from that also was like, hey, I, I would like some Star Wars toys as well. My parents of <laughs> modest means in that time did did their best. And so I didn't have the biggest collection, but I did have one. And then around 1985, when life starts to change, Star Wars is in the rearview mirror for uh, pop culture, it would seem. I sold all of them. Uh, except for a Death Star gunner and General Veers, or the, the ADAC commander, if you will, and a Y-Wing. I sold all of them for $2 because I wanted a skateboard and then immediately turned that skateboard into a catcher's mitt that at least I still have. So you were a regular radar, Corporal Klinger. Just, you, were, you were working your way up the chain. Yes, which makes just funny. I had a Klinger three and three-quarter mash figure. <laughs> People forget that there were mash action figures, that that yes. was a thing that had an extensive line <laughs> that almost has more of a figure line than Solo had. And I, you're not wrong. Absolutely not wrong. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Crazy. So from there. Yeah. So that's added not to go year by year. But yeah, Star, Star Wars always in my heart. But, uh, you know, it, it, it ebbed and flowed with pop culture in the mid 90s. Power of the Force 2. I was in college studying screenwriting and starting my radio career, all that stuff. And we were still nerds. We were still in the back of the class. No one would talk to us. But me and my friend Joel, we would sneak out of our screenwriting class, go to Toys R Us. And finally, Power of the Force 2 came. And, and I've been collecting ever since. Yeah, it was a good entry point back in to mm -hmm. hit that. For us, at that period of time, the nostalgia of, I have some disposable income. Enough to where I could justify. It's only a couple of bucks. It's... It's that or a burger. What am I gonna yeah. do? I'm gonna I'm gonna buy this because look, it's Yoda. There was literally Ken a Carl's Jr. in the same parking lot as that Toys R Us in Santa Maria, California. So you oh, had your option. You had double, that choice. Double, double How Western. often did you sit in that parking lot? <laughs> yeah. Stomach growling, going, yeah. "What do I?" Yeah, absolutely. It, it was uh, yeah. It, 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 was, it was double Western bacon cheeseburger or Buff Luke. What do but I got? I, but what I hear I got? they put Yak Face on a card. <laughs> right. It's back. I never got it. It's right. Right. <laughs> oh man. How could I turn that down? 
uh no that that period also of of childhood where i don't think it's quite the same today how much of a childhood black market was going on Mm -hmm. in that era of trades and sales and parents would invest so much money i remember trading all of my gi joes for a megatron well and in hindsight that was not sanctioned there was no oversight there was no one occasionally you'd have a parent (laughs) that would show up and go listen this happened without our knowledge this should not (laughs) we spent a lot of money on that thing yeah yeah but a lot of times it was just that stuff changed hands so many times yeah i mean that's not unlike when i i I was a baseball card collector too and i convinced a, a kid to trade me uh his eric davis rookie card for tony perez and dave concepcion two true blue hall of fame players uh <laughs> that were worth 10 cents at the time for his uh, three dollar eric davis so yeah uh, that's a that's a good deal i think Megatron? so do you know where the kid is that you traded no <laughs> no i think his do name you was think Isaac. he stares at that tupperware container every once in a while and goes i should get rid of those things that <laughs> nap suck. that knapsack kid in fourth grade got me got what me. a what a sucker I've wow. sold that for so much, but then yeah. you have that. So my, my story is mm-hmm. probably a little worse. I didn't have any control wow. over mine. Mine was finding out my mother had decided to give my entire collection to my cousins Oh no! without my knowledge. No, uh, they had no interest because they were younger and in the Ninja Turtle era by that point. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. my understanding, and I've talked about this often is that, uh, these things are sitting in an attic in Pennsylvania, and one day I'm going to go back and claim these out of my aunt and uncle's home, where they have continued to reside unappreciated for yeah. 35 years. You you need to form a brute squad, Ken, and I volunteer as tribute. Let's I, go down. Let's, let's, let's down all let's all go find. Oh, there's so much. There's the my Bespin Han Solo with the ink mm. pen eyes. Yeah. You should never fix your own figures at that age. <laughs> never, never. <laughs> it's fascinating, too. And, and, and on my, like, yeah, when I sold a couple of years later is when I realized, oh, I think I made a huge mistake, to quote Joe Bluth. And But I have all the other figures, right? I have my Transformers, have my G.I. Joe's, have my muscle uh, fi- little figs. I have my mask figures. I'm a big mask fan. And I asked my folks about it. I was like, why, why, why did you let me sell all the Star Wars toys for $2? two whole dollars and they were like i don't know we just figured you wanted to do it we were going to support that they didn't they're so overprotective they didn't support me in any other dream except for that one ken (laughs) there's a spite support (laughs) so then you probably have the same and you can let me know if you have that same sort of emotional attachment to the figures of that era and trying to find and reclaim them which i have slowly tried to do and each time i do i flash back to what my original one looked like yeah which again is just sitting in a attic somewhere uh but <laughs> yeah. yeah no i have those connections and it's so funny. i i um tore apart my storage this morning i have a storage shed in my backyard and there sits all of my 2015 to 2017 funko pops uh that era Good, a solid investment as well yeah and for uh this wonderful show i was so happy to be on it and i talked to joseph scrimshaw and i was like just I, it, it's things i have right it's not like dreams and he goes no you, you, you know ken would like you to, to have it and show it i said okay great i gotta go into the shed and there's two figures i couldn't find they're somewhere they're in a box somewhere but it is a, a kenner hoff uh luke and a original Kenner um, Han Solo that, like you said, over the years have picked up to kind of fill that hole in my soul. <laughs> but I it's don't good, buy it. It's him. good that the, the hole has a number, though. There's only a finite yeah. number of figures finite that were number. released in that line. Yeah. And it's I don't have the on card stuff. You know, I, it's I, it was uh, the Han Solo I got like at a WonderCon. I think WonderCon Las Vegas. It was in a ten dollar bin, like find the best one for ten bucks. And I found that and it just kind of felt like all right it's back it's back i got it yeah i mean i don't have that sort of same emotional attachment to getting carded and obviously chasing that very expensive dragon yeah. uh, luckily so it's a right. lot easier because of the amount of these figures that were produced in the 80s yeah i mean the fact that you know you look at because we are also modern collectors i know you chase down the modern mm-hmm. stuff as well and how impossible it is to find things to know that you could have walked into a shop in 84 and seen characters back to a new hope still on the peg brand new and available 
is is something that's disheartening when, when collecting today. Yeah. But it means there's a lot out there, and that sort of loose figure find is a much more attainable goal to chase yeah. down. Absolutely. I, you know, I don't do any of this for, uh, you know, not spit. This is a crypto. I'm not spinning it off into some bigger uh, payday, <laughs> right? As it vanishes in front of me. Uh, but I did, yeah, looking at my storage shed even today with like uh, my 2015 surge with a lot of us, that 2014, 2015 surge with the new stuff and everything. I have so much Force Awakens stuff. Love the movie. Love that. But I'm just like, I, yeah, I, I, the attachment's a little different than uh, that. Are you an opener on new stuff? Uh, no, uh, some, sometimes, uh, and you'll see, see that with some of my choices. Some are still boxed, some are open. Uh, it just depends on room to display, uh, and, and the emotional connection to those characters and, and what I'm communicating to people that will walk into my house or studio. Like, uh, and now it's just like, here's uh, what's on display and what is open is what I really, really love and want, want you to know versus well, just overall Star Wars, which I, I think love, that, but you know. That leads us into your, your first choice. Yes. All right. Now, I will say this. Uh, over the years, uh, you just had the, the wonderful Joseph Scrimshaw on. He is a big fan still to this day, the three and three quarter line. Love that. Some of that might be in my list. Uh, but I, I really was an adapter to Black Series and the six inch line. Love the line. And my friend Mike Black, um, who, if you don't know, we got we to gotta put you in contact. Great comedian, big toy Love collector. Too. And he said it on an early Force Center episode around 2015, 2016. He's like, the thing with the Black Series 6 inch is we've all grown up, including our hands, so have the figures now. <laughs> <laughs> so the scale's the same in your mind. And so I just took to it. So, but I, I will say this number five starts uh, because of space, because of that uh, allowance money issue that sometimes I have enough allowance money to buy the toys. Sometimes I don't give myself enough allowance to buy the toys. I've become a little more picky, and there was one I had to have, which would have shocked me back in 1999. So, Ken, we're going to start off with one of my favorite Black Series figures, and it is Mr. Jar Jar Binks. I Same. Love this figure. I love the display. One day I might buy a second to take it out, but it's just, you know, the Black Series totally pulls you in, especially as they've updated the advertising uh, on the side, as I call it. That's advertising. That's not a, that's not a design. <laughs> that's like, do you want this? Um, and I, I, I've, over the, over, the, over the years, have grown to really love Jar Jar and even more so appreciate Ahmed Best and the ground he broke with his character. And I love that in 2019 he got some love again in Chicago uh, to come back and, and that he's, you know, he voiced the character a little bit later on in Clone Wars. He got to play the character Kelleron Beck in the uh, game show that was on Star, uh, the Star Wars YouTube channel. I want him even more in, and I want more George, Jar Jar, and I, I, I really have come to appreciate the character. Uh, and I wasn't one who, like, burned the figures at Effigy back in the day. I just, it wasn't for me, and it's not every Jar Jar beat is for me, but I just love it. And this is one of the ones I had to go get. I had to get my hands on because I needed the world to know, and I needed to cash that <laughs> dollar vote like it was my <laughs> economics class in ninth grade to, to let everyone know that Jar Jar is a special place in my that heart. That should be in the figure. background of every shot that <laughs> yeah. you have. Why is that? Yeah. Why is he not prominently displayed? So I, I'm an open, I got that as well. I got that set. So uh, I, I really enjoy the posing on mm -hmm. that. What I love is that uh, he, instead of a weapon, I've created Jar Jar karaoke night and that is his microphone. <laughs> and so, yeah, he's, he's back on the, what used to be just a keyboard uh, holding his, <laughs> his microphone and really giving it his all. That's, that's beautiful. I could see that. Uh, the Black Series, yeah. I mean, the, the posability on those for, as you said, for adult hands <laughs> is, is a lot easier to attain. The, you know, growing up, there is a nice sort of way that how hyper real they've gotten. Yeah. Uh, you know, the stylization of the Kenner line has fallen away. Yeah. You know, and, and that late 90s series was not bad by any stretch when mm -hmm. they got into a groove. Uh, but the Black Series really is sort of the the height of action figure development and posability. And yeah, but how surprised were you to to know that that figure had been made? Because there um, was a period where to to think there would be new Jar Jar merchandise at all on the shelf, yeah, was unthinkable. Uh, it, it just seemed right. This is uh, I forget when when was this released? It wasn't well, two not years too ago. ago. Yeah, I yeah. think it was like I remember getting it at the start of the pandemic because it was yes. a it was a deliver at the curb buy. Yeah, <laughs> you're going out in your Marty McFly as Darth yeah. Vader outfit. Uh, yeah, so I right, made Mitch. a choice. I knew I'd be sitting in a parking lot and an, an employee would have to walk that out and judge me the whole way. I can go take this Jar Jar to this guy in a car. <laughs> 
hold on. I'll be back. Can I take my lunch after this? Um, yeah, but make sure you take a yeah. picture of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was, I was, you know, following that 2019 uh, Star Wars Celebration Chicago was a real, what I thought was a, just a love fest for him and best in a lot of ways. And I, I wish it was even more. Uh, I think there should be more um, celebration of, of that character in, from a technical side, uh, the idea of, of what he did and what they all did to build that character. I think it's fantastic. So I, it was heartwarming. I'm a big fan of Chuck Wendig's, uh, epi- uh, ep- what I call the epilogue of Jar Jar Binks, a uh, little interlude in one of his uh, Aftermath books, which is this sad, powerful tale um, bittersweet at best, but it's sad and tragic of, of Jar Jar being left by everyone, all his friends and all the galaxy, and all he's left to do is entertain the refugee children of the war. And it's this beautiful, beautiful piece. And it made me rethink. And again, I wasn't one of those big demonstrative anti-Jar Jar people, but I was, you know, part of that. I was 22, 23 when Phantom Menace came out. So I, I had my, oh, he steps in the poopy jokes that I made. And it, and it changed a lot. So uh, to, to answer your question, in short, Ken, this was, uh, it was actually kind of, dare I say, moving as a Star Wars fan to know this was coming. Well, you know, uh, it is one of those figures that I see pop up quite a bit now uh, on discount. So now's the time to get your second and third and fourth okay. figures. And then he's all singing song. group behind your cantina band, which I'm sure yeah. you'll be picking up at some point. Some point. Some point. Maybe throw in a Captain Tarples on, on base. <laughs> it will be good. It will be good. It will be good. Pull up the Binks truck. Yeah. Uh, so, so your second choice, second choice. Uh, now, now I was in my head, I'm working five to one here. I don't know right. We're building up. Okay. We're okay. building up to your, yes. Uh, but Jar Jar could be number one in my heart. Um, so I'm going back to a three, three and quarter, uh, line here. Uh, this was, uh, from, oh my gosh, the eyes are failing me. Can't, uh, 2006 era of the Saga collection, uh, which was a great, you know, you had Luke with the deleted scene stuff, a, a chief chirpa, all these things looking on the back here. But this is one of my favorite characters. I have an odd obsession with Imperial officers, which is weird because I definitely think they're on the bad team. Um, but I've always loved this guy, especially since the Return of the Jedi novelization. And I need it. And they never really made one back in the day. But it is uh, uh, Tion Moff Jer Gerard. And <laughs> this is what's so fast. It's the Battle of Endor figure. Uh, Michael Pennington uh, featured prominently right there in the front, his character. I just have always loved Moff Jar Gerard. I loved, I loved, maybe it was the obsession I, that I didn't know I had with the struggles of middle management. Just going, I need, <laughs> I need more men. Um, and there was a, a great quote uh, that he had in the Return of the Jedi novelization. As he's running to meet Vader of great men never hurry, great men cause others to hurry, which I probably... Uh, misinterpreted as like that's a good thing to think, but but you know I just was always I always fascinated with the character. So fascinated, Ken. I accidentally bought this figure twice. Uh, there's two of them in my storage shed right now. This is the one the ones I went to get up. Um, it was so. Um, oh, it comes. That's not an accident. Well, there was I bought it probably uh, when it, around the time it came out with a lot of excitement, and then a few years later uh, I had moved, and some of it was probably in boxes. And I had uh, an, uh, this uh, job as my old uh, my old job as a security director at a, at a big mall in Los Angeles. And there was a toy store uh, in there. And I became friends with the manager. And every day I get my coffee and hang out and talk nerd stuff with them. And they're like, oh, we got some new figures in. And they had a Moff Joe Gerard. And it was like I had amnesia. I turned around. I was like, oh, my God, I've been looking for that my whole life. Bought it. <laughs> went home and put it in the storage, storage box on top of the Moff Joe Gerard I had bought two years prior. And how often do you get to recapture that same excitement? Yeah, it was totally, it's like a kids in the hall <laughs> sketch. Oh, great. I needed that. You already had it. You already had it. But, it was uh, it's it. fascinating to find his, uh, his bulked up storyline in the deleted scenes, which I'm sure m- much of it was in the novel. I've never read the novelization. So I'm assuming all that is represented in the novelization. His sort oh of. Oh my God. Can we have a side conversation about it? I, I want people, everyone, uh, to read the Return of the Jedi novelization. The stuff in there, you're right, his deleted scene stuff is in there. Uh, the stuff of Mon Mothma, when Mon Mothma is introduced in that novel, it is basically the uh, 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 like a pitch package for Rebels, the Star Wars Rebels animated series. You're reading it going, oh, oh, this is that show. Gosh, I got it. And even now that we're going to see with Andor, it, it's a great novel, and, and it really does highlight him. So, yes. The tragic almost hero, hero tale of Moff Jr. The, 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 the almost hero tale. Almost. Of, <laughs> but like middle management, sometimes they just sort of stays in the groove. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't change yeah. the system. Nope. Nope. Just got to do what you got. But right do. now he, he got off, right? He got off the, the Death Star at the last moment. He's living on a planet with Veers somewhere. 
Somewhere, right? Yeah. The two of them yeah. settled down. They have a nice <laughs> odd couple relationship. Yeah, both of them lost in that deleted scene canon uh, crevice that they could fall into. Yeah, like, yeah. Is, they is, keep is, arguing yeah, about yeah. whether they still exist in canon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> the novel said Hobby crashed into his walker, but he's not. He's still alive. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I mean, but he is officially alive in canon still, isn't he? I can't. I honestly can't remember. Scrimshaw and I were talking. I think that in the certain point of view book, it. wasn't that one of the things that revealed? There's a whole story yeah, about. There's. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're is right. barely clinging to life. You're right. But did he change his life after it? That's really that's the key. That's the goal. that's the key. Did he veer away? No. Oh, <sighs> goodbye, Ken. I gotta go. <laughs> but it was nice that legacy collection period. Yeah, because that was another sort of what they could have done post mm -hmm. the same thing yeah. they did post Return of the Jedi. They could have done Revenge of the Sith, where it's like we're gonna let it lay fallow for a bit mm -hmm. we're going to cool it down it's not an active concern yeah it's weird to compare those two post trilogy periods and see well this is what happens when you don't let an ip go right. away and continue yeah. it on to think that we could have had no clone wars we could have had nothing development developed during that period that could have just been george going oh i want to do my sequels in 10 years or so or 15 no oh, i'll wait yeah. He had the money again at that point. The sequels were successful enough. The prequels were successful enough. So yeah. he could have done the same thing. Could have, could have taken that ride off into the sunset, like uh, the end of a Red Dead Redemption game or something. Right? But uh, no, yeah, great. Line. Yeah. In fact, I'm even, again, I'm looking on the back of this and I'm like, I'd like to get these figures. It's like a golden age of like, this was the last deep dive. Like, I yeah. don't think, you know, we uh, talked a little bit about this with Scrimshot. I think it's going to be a recurring thing is that. That 2000s period seems like a weird, great golden era of let's deep dive. Mm -hmm. Let's go in to every obscure character. Let's push everyone out. Let's do everything because we, there's still a, a functional toy market. Yeah. Uh, the economy's right. doing okay. Their collectors are coming into their own and really wanting all these obscure characters. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, to see some of those now, like some of those fan choice characters, I can't imagine them doing some of those mm. today. No, especially for the, the newer movies, which is uh, a lot, lot to do with the toy market change. And obviously not the movies themselves or the properties. Yeah, everything changed. Yeah, but yeah, 2006, everyone was like, you know what? There's a lot of these people buying houses now when they need toys for their houses. Things are going to be great. Don't worry yeah. about those. They're houses. buying it on credit. It's They're fine. On credit. <laughs> The market's a big bubble, never going to burst. It's all good. It's all good. They need a Moff Jer Gerard for their den. But knowing that you would not get probably a Jer Gerard today. <laughs> right. Sad. That's sad. We need so more. you saved. You, you're keeping his memory alive. Yeah. Yeah. Keeping the flame up. So speaking of uh, keeping it going, let's talk about your, well, now we're at the intersection. So now this is number yes. three either way. It is. It is number three in either way. And um, I, I, I'm, I'm bringing the figure in, but I'll tell you right now, this is a vehicle. Uh, but the vehicle is part of it, but it's really it's focused on the figure. I don't, I don't want to. Sounds like a real rules. mask fan to me. <laughs> <laughs> Mobile Armored Strike <laughs> Command. Um, so you mentioned like, yeah, the solo line, man. Uh, I wish there was even more for the solo I'm big uh, solo line. I'm a big fan of the solo film and the characters and the designs. And so that is why my number three is Infus Nest and her, oh. her speeder there. Look at that. Whoa. Uh, I absolutely, I, I, I'll try to take the figure off here without destroying everything I've done to set up this little, little tableau. <laughs> um, just love, uh, Infus Ness as a character, what she represents to the story. I think there's a lot of potential there. This character, this, this new face of the rebellion, so to speak, which is not the classic rebellion we eventually will learn about, but just where the rebellion started from the people and what she represents. She represents this new hope as well. But that design, this, Ken, look at this design. Cape with the fur, the 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 helmet that has uh, you know family legacy to it, uh, uh, the, everything about the design around Infus Nest and her Cloud, Rider, Cloud Riders. But I just love this character for the first uh, first sight and some of the promotional material. Uh, Aaron Kellyman brings uh, uh, just a, a great vulnerability but strength to the character. So I, I'm really a big Infus Nest fan. And this one is this one of those ones. Got it. Took it out of the box. Had to display it, <laughs> even though it is not quite GI Joe aircraft carrier size, but it it uh, it takes a lot. It's yeah, it's it's a commitment. Yeah, that's the word. <laughs> that's the word. Also, that aircraft carrier was incredible. I mean, anything that you could actually double as a bed. 
Were were you one of my mortal enemies that got it? No, no. I used to see it. So uh, father was military. So we were on Quantico Marine Base at the time that would have come out. And I remember going to the uh, Toyland slash Garden Center. Good start. Which is where all the stuff for the all the toy stuff for the PX was, uh, which was in a converted bunker. Uh, and going in and seeing that thing encompassing an entire bottom shelf and knowing that that was my one and only ask. And it was a hard no because (laughs) the thing was, but I had a friend who had it. Yeah. And it was one of those things you go over just to, that was the kid who also had all the bigger transformers. And did we all have that kid? Did we yeah. all have that kid? I don't want to name him because occasionally he pops up in my Twitch stream uh, chats and I actually liked him. Mine but... was Joe. I'll leave Joe. it at Joe, but it was Joe. And he <laughs> had all the things. He had all the things. He had the aircraft carrier. He had the mask gas station uh, secret base, you know, uh, uh, Optimus Prime. Everything that took more batteries to... than you could even imagine exist in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And winches. I... So many winches. <laughs> so many winches. Uh, you know, I had Bumblebee. I had Bespin security guard and he had everything else. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh no. That was, that was the kid you were jealous of. And the one who yeah. never seemed to appreciate it. No, he's not a Star Wars. Like, do you yeah. understand that you have? Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny how for like our generation, like, you know, for like my dad's generation, it's like, I finally reached uh, my mid forties. I got some disposable income. I'm finally going to get that 57 Chevy I've wanted. And we're like, I'm finally going to get the aircraft carrier. Yeah. <laughs> finally, I'm, I'm getting reese on a card. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's been my dream since childhood to get and my reuse back here's the thing ken I-, I wouldn't change that at all i don't want to co- i don't want a 57 chevy i do want reese on car <laughs> no because once you have that it's fine it's done that 57 <laughs> chevy is going to keep taking cash keep from taking, you keep taking for the rest of his existence until you yep. finally offload it on someone else and don't tell them yeah that yeah. their dream is tainted <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> absolutely but that you know that it's i think it's nice to see how the black series of deluxe figures have seemed to also inform better quality for the vintage smaller scale of figures because yeah. you look at those cloth goods on the Enfist nest yeah and, you know and as kids we would have gotten vinyl and been happy about it or a cloth right. that seems so fragile as to you know blow away in a strong breeze uh but that yeah. that's incredible yeah, she wouldn't have had the, uh, you're right. She wouldn't have had the fur. It would have been a Kenner. The Kenner would have just been like drawn on fur. So, or I would have had a scotch tape, some grass. Yeah, well, it, it would have been a different color of thin cloth. Yeah, yeah, that's what it would have been. Would not have fit together well. <laughs> uh, but yeah, to see that is incredible. Also, vehicles are going away now yeah. as a thing. Yeah. And look, and the Black Series six inch made it harder to collect those vehicles. Uh, this I know, but uh, yeah, uh, it's kind of sad too. Uh, so, what is your number two? All right, so you know, I- I'll say this, Ken. I I, I don't want to break any rules, but also, you were so nice. You didn't really put any guardrails on this. Just figures. I kept. I always kept in the spirit of figures. So my final two choices are might be I don't know. Could be cheats. You tell me. Uh, this is an unintentional set. I think it was a twenty seventeen. Uh, this this first part of it was a 2017 Comic Con exclusive. A Force Center uh, listener named uh, Shaler actually uh, tracked them down for Joseph and I. Uh, we compensated him if I do remember. I'd be a jerk if I didn't because he waited in line and we were at a meet and greet and we couldn't get to it. And he was like, "Yeah, hey, yeah, I got picked these up for you guys." Uh, so the first part of it is the the Luke and Ray. This is the uh, Jedi training um, Black Series line in 2017 before the movie came out. I just love it. I love this movie. I love these characters. But to go with it, I do have the scale porks. So it not is a, the not set. a cheat at all. Not no, a cheat okay. At all. Okay. Okay. It's fine. I, I'll accept it. <laughs> I mean, you. I might have to take crap later from the council, but <laughs> for now, it's accepted. Who's on the council? Is Opa Rancis is there? He owes me money. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Um, and look, I, I am a, I'm a big pork fan. I, I just, I just adore them. I really do. I have some pork stuff around. I felt, I fell for it. I fell for the porgla, the pork hoopla. Um, so when I ordered this, I didn't realize, uh, when I ordered the black series, when I wasn't, I don't know, I wasn't paying attention when I said add to cart. Cause who does? 
And when it showed up like this, I just was like, oh, they did it to scale. Oh, like I couldn't imagine it, which was stupid of me. But then so, you know, so I have it again. I haven't taken these ones out. I actually moved shortly after I got this uh, this uh, line. So it just kind of went into a, a display uh, like this kind of vibe. But I don't know. I just love it. Um, and He's even it, standoffish in the display. He is. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, Urgh. and uh, you know, I, I I did listen to your episode with with uh, Scrimshaw, and you know, he's such a big Luke fan. I am, I am too. But his his end, I I've been working with him since 2015, um, 2014, really, but for Center since 2015. And his anticipation for Skywalker, uh, sequel era, but particularly like Last Jedi era Luke stuff is is so high. It's rubbed off on me. So I just look at this, and I'm just so glad that I do have. Jedi Master Luke Skywalker, grumpy or no, that I have this figure. It exists. And that I survived this long, Ken, to get to it. And that we have the next generation there, which uh, Star Wars is all about, uh, passing things on to the next generation. I did not know that except uh, existed. Yeah. Oh. Although a lot of Comic-Con exclusives are like that. They come and go so fast. Yeah. Yeah. And I have like the, yeah, I have like the Job of the Hut one from a couple years prior, uh, San Diego Comic Con and, and all that kind of stuff. So that's yeah, the one yeah, that yeah. came with a throne, right? The only it one that come came with a throne. throne. And I paid, uh, someone else uh, had got it um, at uh, one of the managers, uh, Christina was her name at the, that toy store I mentioned to you in the mall that I worked at. And she got it. And I paid $100 cash money, uh, Ken, because I needed it for my YouTube set. <laughs> Like, well, considering what that set is going for now, yeah, that was a very good purchase because I well, have looked and tried to get any Jabba's. I, the fact there's no Jabba's readily available, yeah, is a is a weird thing. I got to see how much I want to pay off some debt, but uh, it's mine's mine got taken out of the package so many times for that show. It was a show called Jedi Alliance with Mon Garrett years ago, and I, I would I, it, it job is probably not in the best of shape, you know, like all of us. Yeah, well, you know, getting up in years. Yeah, he's had some rough yeah. times. How old yeah. is Jabba in canon? He's uh, he's an old he's one. He's slightly man. younger than. Is he younger than Yoda? Or he's older yeah, definitely than Yoda? younger. But yeah, yeah, that, that's a good question. I have to ask uh, Alex of Star Wars Explained. I can't remember that. Mm, yeah. Also, you do a hut battle. When when's when are you doing your hut battle? When is the uh, just just <laughs> last hut standing? Yeah. Yeah, last hut standing. Gardula, Nemo. <laughs> Yeah, wherever stinky is stinky where is stinky hashtag where's stinky rada rada needs uh there's the, gotta the, be a story why wasn't that asked of filoni at celebration just that who cares about the meaning of ahsoka and luke for the first time it is uh where is good, rada that's a good sidebar uh i know a lot of people asking about rada but not none of them asking filoni yet because he's done such a great job of, of pulling back uh, you know, so many characters uh, from Clone Wars put them other t stories. Uh, you know, now that we got Gungi coming up in Bad Batch 2 and even P Professor Hwang, the droid from the Gathering, might be in Ahsoka, it looks like. No Rada. Come yeah. on. Yeah, I want to see Filoni's fanfic. Like the stuff he just yes. writes for himself. Yes. Because it's, it's probably all Plo Koon. It's, it's Plo Koon. It's uh, Rada. It's Mama the Hut. Um, and Favreau just draws a line at those. I, I I do have a question for you on that because I was yeah. I was listening to you and I was thinking about all the Jedi that are returning and have yeah. returned in canon mm -hmm. and thinking about Plo Koon and his love of Plo Koon that if he could have found a way to get Plo Koon back he would have but I wonder because of how reverential he is to George yeah. that any Jedi we saw specifically die in Revenge of the Sith are off limits to coming back to him. I would think so. And, and, and to me, that includes the big Mace Windu question that sometimes pops up. And, and I, I'm, I don't well, I love Mace and I love the questions he makes you ask about the Jedi Order, both good and bad. Um, I wouldn't want him back either. But it's Star Wars and stranger things have happened. Um, so I, I think if, uh, you know, that word flashback can uh, open up a lot of doors to, uh, you know, I'm shocked there wasn't a Tales of the Jedi announcement for Plo Koon. Right, right. Well, again, yeah, you know, if if I could see that Dave, in his own way, would try to find a way to get Plo into live action somehow, some way, flashback, world between worlds, <laughs> for well, anything can happen, right? Isn't anything that the? Yeah, I think that's his hidden agenda. He's just using the character of Ahsoka to get to Plo. Yeah, yeah, it's really just him sitting in the world between worlds, looking through yeah. windows, <laughs> and glancing at all his favorite Jedi and characters. Like what was the uh, what's the bounty hunter he voiced? 
that's still floating out there. Is that Embo? Did he Embo? Do Embo. 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 That's that's yeah. a Scrimshaw favorite too. Yeah, that we 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 have an Embo countdown, an Embo search. But I don't think there's ever been an Embo figure, or else it uh, would have been on Joseph list. <laughs> Yeah, it would, yeah, you're right. I don't know. Might have been in that weird uh, Clone Wars line that was out for a bit, which is a great line. Got some great stuff. I don't know. Good question. So have you thought about buying more Porgs for your set? Just to litter uh, the Porgs everywhere? No, you know, I, I, I have uh, the Porg Funko. I got some plush somewhere. Again, found some of them in storage. Uh, I also, oddly, I have Porgs and a lot of Wampa stuff. So I have plush Wampas, Lego Wampas. Six inch wampas, uh, six inch scale, yeah. So, you have a vintage weird... wampa? Have you gotten a uh, vintage I again? I don't have a vintage wampa and never did because, again, Bestman Security Guard was my most expensive figure. Um, but yeah, that might be on my list too. I'll have to get that. It's good, that's a good Christmas right. purchase. Yeah, it's not too yeah. big. No, it's, I, it's a holiday that goes that goes in with a decoration display. Yes. And absolutely. why hasn't there been an inflatable Wampa for the yard yet? Is, is that a thing? Oh, we need that. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't really snow here in Burbank, but I think I'd make some snow just to put the Wampa. You know what? There. I think in your heart that would make plenty of snow if you just saw that inflatable Wampa yeah. out of everyone, your yard. Everyone went, uh, you know, uh, crazy for that 12-foot uh, skeleton that uh, like Home Depot had at Halloween a couple years ago. So yeah. let's do the Wampa. Make Come a on. Wampa cave in your front yard Yeah, for your holiday yeah. display. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's Every once in a while, well. just hang outside. Gonna so well. <laughs> we've made it up to your number one choice. All right. All right. Okay. And how difficult a decision was this? Because you ranked these yourself. You would have picked out what your five were, but you had to choose the ranking. Yeah. And look, if we do this show tomorrow, uh, tomorrow and then we do the show next week. There probably would be some changes. That's part of the fun of ranking Star Wars things. Like your heart, uh, your heart takes in different directions on some days and what you're feeling. Um, but I also what I like about the, the show, Ken, is that you're, it's, it's like what you have in your collection. And it's not a, a list, a dreamy list of things that you want because there's other characters and figures and stuff that I don't have that I might have included if, if that hadn't been the case here. So all that to say, my number one choice might be, again, a rule bender, but it's a figure. I kept the spirit of that. And it was without a doubt my number one choice. Uh, and it is the, uh, I think it was the early 2000s, mid 2000s, uh, the Play School Galactic Heroes Han Solo on Tauntaun. Oh, and that's brilliant. this is my low key favorite line of Star Wars figures. Um, this, uh, and you can still get, they have a lot of the sequel era ones. There was something, I, and I don't have it, and, and, and going back to the Wampa stuff, there was a line they released. I actually have it up, I, I did some research here. It is, uh, you can get it not too expensive on like an eBay or something like that. It had Luke, Hoth Luke in his Tauntaun. It did have this Han, but lacked the the second Tauntaun because, uh, you know, uh, Luke's had, uh, had gone at this point in the story. And it is uh, the set, and it comes with a Wampa, and the set is called The Stomping Wampa. And that is, a, number one, a great band name. It was my fantasy baseball name for years when I played that. Um <laughs> This is just a magical line, man. And this came out during a time, uh, during like that prequel era. Uh, my relationship with the prequels has changed and grown over the years to a very positive one. But like a lot of folks, I didn't quite know what I was getting first and I had to work through some things. I was also, this was also an era where um, toys were never going to be behind me completely anymore. But, you know, I don't know. I'm in my mid 20s and I got other things to worry about, like how to, you know, pay for things and on my own in life, bigger things, you know. Uh, jobs and everything and so my star wars love was uh it was a flickering it was not a flame uh, you know uh, reaching the ceiling it was a little flicker in the corner so it would take a really strong object to pull you back in absolutely and i turned the corner probably at a target or some other big box store and saw this line and saw the the the, the han and just brought me so much joy. And I, too, have a lot of Han on Wampas in different uh, varieties, including Legos and Black Series and all that kind of stuff. Han on um, Tauntaun, you mean? A Han, on, Han on Tauntaun. Although I'd yeah. love to see him riding a Wampa now. Yeah. I mean, if we've had a Rancor riding scene, we should have a Wampa riding scene. That, that is in my Disney Plus pitch Or package. a Wampa riding a Tauntaun. You know what? I'm sure if we just all left them alone to work out their differences, that's where we would have ended up. I wonder if you can get the figure from that set, the, the Wampa, on the back of that Tauntaun. You probably could. Looking at it, it's got a wide... Uh, yeah, it might. It might. It might. Okay. Um, Life goals. 
Life calls. <laughs> Life calls. But yeah, man. And I mean, just look at that little guy. He's got the face. He's just, I don't know. It, it just brought me so much joy. And that's why, and this is stated, and I immediately took it out of package and displayed it. It's, it's gone through many apartments. It's gone through a couple offices. Uh, it's one of those little lines, uh, those little figures that just stays with you. And we all kind of have those in our collection, Star Wars and other toys too. And uh, every time I look at them, I'm reminded, reminded of that time. Like this is, again, I wasn't like down on Star Wars. Uh, I was working through some things with the prequels again, but just like it started to feel that once again, by 2005 or six, it was in the rear view mirror. And to just see this and to just be reminded of my joy of Star Wars and what I love and Han's, Han's my guy. And um, it just uh, you know, completely designed ages three to five. <laughs> at a, at a pretend. I don't have children, uh, and I had to emotional that age. Day. Yeah. Emotional age. Yeah. Uh, but it's and, it, and the detail on it's pretty darn good too. So yeah, it was a I great line. It. They around that time they did. I have the Indiana Jones ones. They did. Oh my gosh! They didn't. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Which well, you got to check these out. Because they actually had a set that had Belloc in his ceremonial garb with the Ark and a little ghost, a stylized ghost that you could set inside the Ark. Ages three to five, if you want to be scared Ages three forever. to five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now with melting face action. Yeah. They are great. I highly recommend you seek out mm. the Indiana Jones. You know, it's a shame because they were doing those with Doctor Who around that time too i think they might have come out first the, the, that weird sort of stylized look yeah to kids figures uh for the younger kids i love that uh because i remember getting the doctor who ones around this time and that's when i noticed those come out i was like oh oh that's interesting i'm glad yeah. that they're doing it now the doctor can go on adventures with indiana jones <laughs> yes mash them all up mash uh, them all up. but uh yeah having those sort of touchstone figures where it's like, this is always going to be a desk companion. Yeah. Where, you know, Joseph talked about his Obi-Wan being that same thing. I'm I'm curious now to see if this is going to be a trend mm. as we get further into these shows. And I talk to more people, if there's going to be ultimately that special one at the end is the one that's been the touchstone that you're like, oh, I love having that out. Yeah. You know, yeah. For, for Joseph, that being an out figure, you know, for Joseph, an unboxed figure is a huge thing. Yeah. So, you know, what, what, what is the first, when you look at that figure sitting out, what is the first thing that you think? Does a smile come to your face? Does a. Oh, this Han? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It sits, it sits uh, behind my camera on a, on a bookshelf with a lot of like, like mini Funko pops, which I like those and some uh, actual Funkos and Lego little, Lego. I'm a big Lego guy and, and have that. Um, and this one just it, it's right there and it's got I've got a, a some other Han memorabilia around it a, a business card holder that's carbonite Han I got a blaster I got the dice the the, the solo promotional dice and he just he just sits in the middle of it riding this tauntaun uh, <laughs> just saying over and over again with that face uh, then I'll see you in hell and uh, it makes me I mean, makes me happy I mean I have a theory that there's a choice that you make particularly in this zooming age that we live in so you're spending a lot of time being on camera with people and them seeing your environment and vice versa mm. of what are the things that you choose to populate your backdrop with but mm. what are the things that you choose to keep in front of you that's just for you because you like to look at them while you're working yeah that's funny you mentioned it because i've my background is pretty sparse right now um i think you can see it okay with the, I have the the uh, sideshow Obi Wan in the desert, um, uh, and I love that figure. I love that one. It's just a That's lot. That's their mythos one, right? Yeah, it's it's a lot. Even if I had included it on this list, which it could have almost made it, um, I think it just would have fallen apart. <laughs> <laughs> Hands start falling off, lightsabers go everywhere. <laughs> yeah, and then I also what I have, I have this. So this one doesn't count. I have a I have a Bigfoot uh, figure that I, I was gifted. Because uh, I have a weird obsession with Bigfoot mythology. Don't know if I think what well, there is a Bigfoot, but the toy's real. Um, so yeah. Uh, also, so it's I brilliant that you have uh, an in-scale Bigfoot for <laughs> yeah to fight Enfys Nest, right? Yeah, that's what she's. That's what she's. Uh, that's what she's on about. <laughs> she takes off her helmet and says, "I need a drink because I've been fighting Bigfoot." Yeah, and and I just I don't know. Over the years, uh, like I love your background. I could stare at it all day. I'm a big fan of the the Muppets. Have a special place in my heart. A lot of our generation has that connection to Muppets and. 
yeah, I, I've had that look before. Where I've had a lot of stuff, and then right now it's a little sparse because of uh, moving and 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 my fiance and I moving in together. And you know, you know, to kind of pick and choose what you want to display as you should. And so, uh, it now is things of impact and things of uh, things of true value versus just things that I have. Right, where that emotional connection sits. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to share one of my five. So Got this it. is this is my number four. This is a an emotional reclamation choice. So uh, last week was a modern figure. Our last episode was a modern figure. Uh, this one is a vintage Kenner figure love it. that I've wanted to have back for ages. I love this. This was part of a set, but this was my favorite part of the set. And I'm considering this as a figure. It has a rather extent, a large accessory. Uh, but I love this. I love that uh, he lives. <laughs> and so it is. Oh. Vintage Max Rebo. Wow. I love that. I uh, I went around celebration with my Hit It Max shirt that my friend Brian Ward designed. I love Max Rebo. And I love that he's getting his day in the sun again. And I love that, you know, I love his little little diaper oh yeah a answering the age-old question this is the the max i accept i also like that for the vintage figure they just went with same color as max is the diaper for a more modern figure they went with a white diaper <laughs> yeah. obviously none of it canon uh yeah. now uh yeah. mm. but i love that but is this was like you know talking about the stylization of those early and how simple those early kenner designs were yeah but how much better they got towards the end of the line and how much more you would consider them closer to a modern figure in detailing mm, yeah, than those earlier. Like you would look at like a, a Han from the Jedi releases as being closer to a screen accurate Han than what yeah. we saw for a new hope, but it's just I love just an it. incredible figure. And what's I'm the, glad. What's the weight on that? Does it feel good in your hand? Does it feel that? He, he is hefty. Like he's yeah. got a heft to him. This is surprisingly light. Because yeah. it's it's okay. it's open, but placed together. That's what's weird is you feel the heft and the emotional weight of him centering it. Yeah. So there's a lot of levels to this figure. <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. Uh, but you know, I don't know if you've seen. There's um, a collector. I don't know. I don't know if he's ever revealed his real name on a thing. Uh, but he has a YouTube channel called Mighty Jabba's Palace. Hmm. And he is a massive job of the hut collector, like anything job of the hut. Uh, but he also has gotten into 3D printing over the past nice. few years. Yeah. To the point where, you know, he's got the, he's printed reproductions of the classic Java. He scaled the classic Java scan up to six scale. Wow. He also made a life size of the Java, which he assembled in his basement never gonna leave his basement yeah where's wow well, but he live? <laughs> he's i think he's in california probably not very far from you okay uh okay. but uh he also did a six scale max rebo mm. to go with his six scale java display Absolutely. and it just looks incredible it's one of those things that it's astonishing how little love mm. those characters have gotten over the years as far as re-releases mm. Yeah, I hope that starts to change. Uh, you know, one well, of the, the anniversary is that... next year, right? For Jedi. Right. It is. Yeah, absolutely it is. Um, yeah, God, 40 years. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, let's not think about that. Let's not think about that. Yeah, and I, I think um, Max showing back up in the book of Boba Fett and, and, and the mystery of his uh, – well, first I was like, well, he's alive. Then, two, is he still alive? I, I love seeing that and, and and seeing some excitement for those, those silly characters that, that we love so much. That's that's that and that that was obviously what the classic Kenner line did. What you got right there fueled that love of of looking at every frame and going, there could be a figure there. And and we like you said, we don't really get that anymore, but we could still celebrate it. Yeah, I mean, just yeah, uh, I got I got the whole set. <laughs> of course you do. Of course you do. Drew Very, McCool is, I mean, that is a man who knows comfort and style. I'm assuming we've officially lost Droopy. Like, uh, e yeah. e either he went, to, like, I don't know if we ever saw it. Did we see the whole band on the barge? No, it was um, just Droopy. I mean, I mean, just, just, uh, just, just Max Rebo? Just Max. Yeah, yeah, that's a good thing. It's a good thing to ask. Uh, someone will have to track that. But I've always thought, yeah, Droopy. 
I don't know. It just seems like uh, he'd roll with the punches, but also wouldn't move too fast. So if he was on the katana, I don't see him getting off. Where I've always thought Max Rebo probably was protected by his uh, his instrument there, and 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 that's why he was able to fly fly off and slowly maybe it is back. a vehicle. Maybe it's it actually has a little <laughs> dome. We've seen we've seen that with with Grogu, where yeah. you can have that sort of scalloping dome go over yep. it. Yep. And you know, I'm sure a lot of gigs go south. You got to have an exit strategy in that yes. universe. You don't play Jabba's palace without having an exit strategy. Yep. You, you, you're playing for the mob, right? You got to know. You got to know one false move. Uh, Maybe that's and, why he has that trouble. large horn that's actually yes. behind it. Maybe behind that just closes down over him just and he up. jets out of there. This is the best head cannon ever. How did Max survive? <laughs> Forget whether Max's arms or his legs or his legs or his arms. It's how did he get out of that? And yeah. And, uh, so I'm, I'm hoping, man, I'm hoping that because of that, because of Max, we'll get a little bit more of what you're talking about. Maybe a little bit more love for the band and some newer figures. Yeah, he's playing stuff. Dexter's new club. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Dexter's got a speakeasy. He's a new Absolutely. planet somewhere. Absolutely. Everyone, everyone's joining up. Uh, yeah. So that yeah. was my honor. That was my choice. That was my, my, uh, my number love four that. on the list. Uh, and it's great to have back because you yeah. went to Celebration. Did. Now, I know Joseph did some action figure hunting. Did you do any? So I kind of did. Uh, yeah, I did. Um, uh, but I, it, it pales in comparison to anything uh, Joseph uh, did. And if, if anyone has had a chance, uh, you know, you've been friends with him a long time, to watch him figure hunt, it's amazing. Um, his eye is it's 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 all level <laughs> all degrees he's just like yeah, i gotta go i gotta go and and he's always looking for something specific but he's always open to something new and, he, and it, because of that he finds some wonderful things so i've been to a few cons with him and, and experienced that um i'm a little less i i, I get a floor beer i just kind of want to move around and i don't pay attention as much so this year though i had to get two figures that people had to help me get because uh, um i forgot to grab it's a power of the jedi line uh, the collection to Shmi Skywalker. I really wanted that one. Love the character Shmi, and I went back. I went back the next day, and that was the only peg empty at this stand <laughs> at this vendor. I was like, no. Uh, so my friend Brian Ward, great illustrator, makes some great Star Wars shirts. He gifted me one he found on the floor later that day, and then Joseph uh, uh, gifted me one that I had been specifically had said on the podcast I want to get a hold of, and it was the loose Kenner. Don't need it on card because one time I was like at a convention and I went, oh, I picked it up and said, sir, how much is this? And he was like, four hundred twenty-five dollars. You can take that back. Um, but it is the the uh, Emperor's Royal Guard, oh. classic Kenner. Um, this is one of the ones I had uh, back in the day in that fateful two dollar sale. <laughs> All my figures for two bucks. What it could have been a dollar. So really, you yeah. had the better end of that deal. You took yeah. advantage. Yeah, and I did play baseball for a couple of years, so that catcher's uh, mint, uh, catcher's glove uh, came into uh, came into use uh, at the cost of my great counter collection. But yeah, so Joseph <laughs> got this one. I looked at it a few times, and I just was trying to find one that was a little bit, uh, you know, more cost. Uh, cost effective. There, some of the prices on them were too high. But Joseph went back with his also great having its from, accessory is a yeah. huge thing that was the thing too and yeah and it's and and and, and ken what did the, he gifted to me and we went back we were at our hotel we had, we had separate hotel rooms and i i went to my room alone and opened it up and what's the first thing i did just to make sure that he still had on his little bloomers you know <laughs> like oh still just like i remember it well here's the well, you know you mentioned the the oh, yeah. power of the force one mm -hmm. that came out love that one uh which I don't know. There's, you know, there's something to be said also for a sculpted yeah. robe as far as getting a proper hang, but it, he's yeah. got nothing. Nothing. At least for yours, you've got some proper <laughs> legs and bloomers. Yes. He's just sort of <laughs> shuffling along. He's just like some kind of South Park character, <laughs> just like. Doo, 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 doo. Yeah, it's such a great design, design on so that. Good. So uh, good. It's that it's that red man. I collected him and the Crimson Guard in G.I. Joe. I needed those bright red evil characters, <laughs> I guess. The uh well, I'll share a couple of my recent acquisitions just because yes. and I'm curious to hear your thoughts on them because I love mm. uh the weird stuff that just exists. Oh, and yeah, we were yeah. talking about that era of you do anything, you release anything, any scene, like it may be a character we've had a dozen figures of, but you know what? We really need a scene specific. Yeah. version of it so why not 
<laughs> Chewbacca, self-satisfied Chewbacca. Self-satisfied Chewie. Yeah, uh, you know, a double oh as God. Magic Mike Chewie. Yes. With oh, there's a, the mm. the Jajaric table in the background with the little figurines. Oh my God! I knew that existed. I've seen it on like Jedi business and websites like that. I've never seen it. <laughs> and I don't think I've seen it like on like at the con. That's definitely one that is up for grabs in my future collecting dreams. So, there. oh, I get I got it for a very reasonable price. So you can find yeah. these floating out there. Uh, again, a wonderful period mm -hmm. of other figures. Oh yeah. So we get a boss uh, Nass, but in the final orb ceremony. I mean meeting. I love yeah. God, I love Boss Nass too. Um uh this is the Porkins line. This is when we finally got right. a Porkins figure. Finally, justice for Porkins. Uh we got an Anakin Skywalker mechanic. Oh, so he's right. He's, working he's... on the droid. Yeah. Uh we got our final duel, our duel of the fates duel figures. Like that's like yeah, little kid Anakin, right? Right? Is that yeah, one? little little yeah, kid yeah. little kid Anakin with his little little tiny droid oh, that he's yeah, putting back that. together. Love that. Uh Fode and Bead figure. Don't love that. <laughs> <laughs> that's just the announcer in you that's talking. Yeah, that's just yeah, the, no, I, the broadcast personality's going a little And much. I love I love Greg Proops and I love the Phantom Menace. Eh, you know, it's one of the moments I'm still like, ah, okay, George. Uh, uh, oh, and the Darth Vader Dagobah Vader. Oh, so from the that's cave. Right, that's right. Uh, Coruscant Guard Masamita, our first uh, Masamita figure. Yes. But no, because... a great little weird line. And it came with an eight page booklet, which really? oh, I'm yeah. assuming is just various smug shots of him from across the, okay. the films. Cause, yeah, so this is the line that I have the Shmi. I'm looking at it too far out of reach to pull in the camera here, but yeah, that it's an eight page Shmi booklet. That's amazing. Yeah. It reminds me of the old He Man's that came with the comics, right? Yes, which I, again would be nice if they brought that practice back. Right. Uh, right. So, based on yeah. our conversation with Joseph, there's a few figures yeah. I got just as because of him. I'm going to blame him. Oh, yeah, I blame him for everything. This is so, great. he mentioned this was on his list. Oh yes, the the party sub Obi Wan. Yes, yes. I was so, with him when he got that. So because of that, yeah, I got this. But then I couldn't stop there. You got the set. So I had <laughs> the set. So I I had to get the set, but <laughs> but then I had to one up Joseph because Joseph's <laughs> big thing was, well, I have Luke at the beginning and I have Luke at the end. I have oh no, I got the very first Luke and Leia figure. <laughs> oh this is beautiful this is going to be uh an ongoing which which thing. it is legitimately they put out yep. an action figure of yep. of expecting Padme, Padme right at the end Padme. of revenge of the sith That's, which the uh, posed in the most I yeah guess, yeah yeah i remember that i remember that and even in the the lineup down there the same she's, pose she's spending an entire time holding oh i feel it Wow, that is. Uh, I remember that. I've. Uh, I remember that's an interesting line. And what's it late? It's just Republic Senator. Republic Senator. <laughs> it doesn't even say. Wow, it says her name on the packaging though, right? That's down uh, below. Yeah. Oh, down below we do get a, a little Padme. <laughs> Padme. <laughs> Pad. Mom, can I get the Republic Senator? Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. That's amazing. So it's a good uh, figure, though. I'm glad we have that figure. Yeah, no, it's it's one of those where you go, yeah, thank you for mm -hmm. putting that out. Would they yeah. do that today? And I I kind of doubt they would. Yeah, I I have. Uh, is is that that line too? I don't know if it says in the back there, but like that line might have the, like the Padme, uh, Phantom Menace, Padme, like might be. No, this is of... the straight Revenge of the Sith. Oh, okay, line, yeah, film got release. It. And I and I was I was looking at it today in the storage shed, and I almost pulled it out because I was going to display it because I, lo I love Padme, and 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 I was like, I, this needs to be on my shelf. But I realized it was really technically Sabe. It's a Kira Knightley figure. And I was oh like, yeah, what? from <laughs> yeah, they, they, they they fell for it. They I mean, now's the it. now's the time to have the Sabe yeah. figure. Uh, yes. Oh, and all your favorite soon to be dead Jedi on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Collect them all, and this and, and Filoni's uh, in line in 2005, uh, buying all these figures, working on his cosplay. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. that's fascinating. Last couple.
we talked about this we, we, oh, we yeah. discovered its existence and i had to get luke with bone luke with bone is that what it, is that what it actually says what what is it, what's the description uh the description I'm, is fascinated with those descriptions let's see uh luke's plan to rescue han from jabba's palace seems doomed when the young jedi knight is thrown unarmed into the rancor pit but even without his lightsaber, the resourceful Jedi manages to defeat the massive beast by using every item at his disposal, <laughs> including the bones of its previous victims. Oh, oh and we get God. we get determined. <laughs> yeah. And I love that it's painted so he actually ha is looking up at the yeah. Rancor too. The eyes are oh, looking he up. Is. Yeah. Oh my gosh! And is that that's that's his lightsaber there too? That's and okay, he has that. no glove on the hand, and he's no got glove. the little. Mm. Oh, that's uh, that's that's wonderful. So I had to get one. it. One of those uh, with the challenge coin. <laughs> with the challenge coin, yes, for when you want to throw down. Uh, <laughs> and talking Kenobi, this seemed oh, like a good time. Yes. Before everyone yes. realizes that there at least was a Brea mm -hmm. Organa release at some point. I do remember that one. I'd like to get that one to one day, too. That's that's a key one. Because um, it seems an awful admission, like really should have been in the same package. Yeah, quite frankly. I mean, she's on the cover there on, on the on the Brea uh, on the Jimmy Smith's one there. Um, to not include her. It's like. Maybe a mail away Brea what, or something. What does I I what does it say on the uh, the the bail one? What it's Leia's feature more prominently in the text, what on the front there? Oh, so what, uh, on the separation of the twins one, infant Leia Organa with Bail Organa, <laughs> he's the accessory. <laughs> he's the accessory. Correct, I guess. Correct, but uh, that's fascinating, <laughs> especially now with with Kenobi and what we got in this series so far. Th those figures. Have also, the picture Hang choice on. is weird. Everyone just watching. Yeah, what what's Yoda doing? They just put a Yoda there. I mean, it's great. It's fascinating to see them create a montage through a still image. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this th you can there. imagine the music playing over this. Yeah. Does uh, does the infant that portrayed Leia get uh, royalties from this figure? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a Nirvana question. Mm. Uh, that's true. And then finally, yes. the one I'll share is uh, one I had to get because it's a running joke with a, my pal Hal Lublin, who absolutely loves the and vocal performance Hal. of this character. Yes. I uh, don't tell him I ever said that, but he does. A Watt Tambor. Oh, <laughs> the Techno Union. Oh, my gosh. What, what does he come with there? That's a lot. So he comes with the console from geonosis from the little oh, wow. chamber they're in on geonosis oh that's amazing love that this from a period where they actually you can see other figures came with little display mm. pieces little set pieces i mean coleman trebor i mean come on this is great padme wedding dress an e-web blaster from off gideon to talk about that's amazing what's luke got there luke is that a, is that luke on that's Luke. So that's really? that's from the throne room duel. Oh, I see what I'm seeing. Okay. So it's a tiny, tiny little segment. It's a tiny little segment. That's amazing. Vader doesn't get a segment. Vader, but, Vader doesn't get anything. No. But no. yeah, again, just a. <laughs> yeah. But this yeah. is the same period that gave us the beautiful Dexter Jester figure. Oh. I'm it's, shocked I don't have that. I love Dex so much. Um, you can't see it. there's a there's a original artwork of me sitting in Dexter's diner up above uh, my my camera up there, just out of range. But um, I don't have that Dexter. See, uh, Ken, doing this show has reminded me I need to. <laughs> my journey's not yet complete. So, well, that's the final question for you. Is yeah. you know, I asked you on uh, the Four Center Live thing you did a few weeks back what your mm. holy grail was to find in the wild, like reclaim figure, mm. but. And you answered it there, and people should go check that out. And they should check out all the Force Center stuff because it's all you, wonderful uh, and uh, is is a great way of brightening a mood, uh, particularly if you felt like you, you've you gone in in uh, a sour mood in any way mm. or maybe some aspects of things are not quite to your taste. It's yeah. the, the weird uh, Zen Jedi effect that Joseph has. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in a conversation mm -hmm. it's like i came in mad what are you doing to me this is no i have legitimate 
problems with this? Why are you making me feel better? <laughs> My friend, a friend of mine who's a producer out in YouTube land, uh, Billy, um, he works for Screen Junkies and Fandom. He's uh, He listens to Force Center too, and he wrote me one day, he texts me, he goes, after listening to Joseph, I'm not even sure if I have my own opinions anymore. <laughs> I just have his, and I like it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's a brilliant spell that you all weave mm -hmm. through the conversation. I appreciate it's, that. Uh, really enjoyable to listen to. So they should go back and check that out. But my question for you mm -hmm. now is, what is the figure you always wished or still wish they produce? Mm -hmm. If you had your choice, what do you want to see? Oh man, that is great. So I'm gonna. It, it probably takes me back to anything in the original trilogy, which they have done a lot now. Um, but I think maybe if we, well, they've done it. They've done a proper veer. They've done a lot of it. I was gonna go some the veers. It always bothered me that Adat Commander was what I got when I wanted more of a, of a veers. So I'll, I'll say that, and then I'll go to more modern times as well. I uh, would love to push for some of the smaller characters and get um, um, bigger. One of them I have down here. Let me get this. Um, I would love a little bit more justice for Tally Lintra because this is all I really have is Resistance Pilot Tally. I'd love a six-inch Black Series Tally Lintra because I'm a big fan. Hermione Cornfield, uh, Cor Hermione Cornfield, one of the best cockpit actors in Star Wars. Um, Agreed. So uh, I'd like to see uh, her get her day in the sun. So speaking of veers, we'll show, have you gotten your Black Series veers yet? Uh, I don't. I do have the Black Series Gerard. Ger Gerard. Uh, I don't have the Black Series veers. Which has the most incredible Julian Glover. Julian, Gl Julian Glover, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, so, it is. I've met him. and uh, Oh, wow. Germany's declared war on the Jones boys. Look at that. It is absolutely, it's because it's got the photo reel paint. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that it's transformable into there's mm -hmm. his cap, so you can. Oh, great! So you can take this vest off, the yeah, and just make him, uh, you know, like he's getting his orders. Yeah, he felt surprised. Was wiser. Um, that's amazing. Yeah, no, I love Veers. Um, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I, I, I it was weird that that um, the Adat Commander Kenner. Uh, figure survived in my collection because I had accidentally put him in the Y-Wing cockpit and I didn't sell the Y-Wing. And then after I sold, I went back to my room and was already kind of disappointed in myself. And I was like, there's the Y-Wing. Oh, my God, an ADAC commander's there. So he survived. <laughs> Where is that today? Is that in your stories or do you keep that uh, out? The, the ADAC commander is somewhere around. I, I, it's in something in my shed. I could, couldn't find everything today. Uh, sadly, the Y wing did not survive a move in 2019. I had it from 1983 to 2019, and it just uh, it finally had just got too broken and beat up, and I threw it away. Uh, sadly, in a in a dumpster in Burbank, and then um, <laughs> not uh, even uh, a Viking funeral for it. Uh, yeah, That's... yeah, I was trying to like. <laughs> Hit it with a flaming arrow, uh, <laughs> sir, sir. Not in Burbank, uh, but then a four center listener, um, a great guy named First Right Nate. Uh, he um, gifted me a, a vintage Kenner uh, that he got on eBay, uh, Y wing. So I have it. I have it again. It was it reincarnated. You not, need to put that at at commander back in it. Slide it in because <laughs> that's his proper place now, right? Yep. He totally. needs to be in there. So uh, thank you for joining me on this. I you. hope you had a good time. This is amazing. Going through storage in the heat. In Southern it California, affected me, <laughs> me today, but it was worth it. No, it was worth <laughs> it because uh, uh, there's been a point of my in my brain where I was like, I think I might just be getting rid of a bunch of these uh, things, and I don't have as much connection to the Funko Pops like I used to and all that kind of stuff. But man, pulling out some of these figures from different eras of collecting, they're still in my heart. Well, it's good to know Thank that you. we could probably do a whole nother episode of this with additional choices. So, where should people find you? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Again, thanks for having me. A lot of fun, Ken. Pleasure to, uh, you know, I've always seen your name, but to get to officially know you through uh, collecting and Star Wars is amazing. And uh, uh, yeah, you can find me at Ken Napsock or my website, KenNapsock.com, especially if you're so kind of local, always got updated stand-up comedy uh, dates. Uh, but uh, give Force Center a chance, man. Give it a listen. Uh, we, we go deep. Uh, like Ken said, we, we focus on themes. We focus on what Star Wars is talking about, what the what the episodes and movies are saying, and we apply that to the larger saga and to our own lives. And that's the Force Center podcast feed. You can find it at Force Center Pod on Twitter. And then we're available wherever podcasts are podcasted. 
it's absolutely like I said, it's it is a show that confronts the negativity and encourages the positivity. Love that. And uh, it is it is a joy to have that in existence in what can be a very sour field of critical <laughs> critical discussion of of various fandoms. Yes. yes. Uh, and thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you'd like to support it or me, uh, go to patreon.com slash Ken Plume, uh, at Ken Plume on various things or Insta Ken Plume or on Instagram. And I hope you enjoy the show. Let me know more guests in the future. Thank you, Ken. And I have no sign off thing yet. Still haven't determined it. Let me know what I should say to say goodbye, folks. Thanks. Bye.